This is Plus TV Africa, where big stories live. Welcome to Tea Time, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories. And of course, some very interesting personalities in the world of entertainment. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I'm here with Ewa Ritu and Ife Oluwa Oshunke. Oh, you guys are out. Oh, sorry. What's up, guys? Ife, Ife. Uh, yeah. Are you the king in this <laughs> studio? Are you I back to this I'm back boy? alive, people. Uh, what happened to you before? Oh, no. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. I went to the promised land. Mm -hmm. Welcome back from the back. promised land. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a guest, but before we let the cat out of the bag, this one is a very long cat. Um, let's talk about the trending gist, and he's on Naramali again. He says, if you do, if you like, do the biggest marriage. If you don't have kids, you are still single. So, Malians. You know, you, they're on the same level, so they understand. Okay, so yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, MD, MD. I said she's not a true Malian. Did you see the lawyer yesterday? Did you make sure Malian? You're going to. Uh, I'm a lawyer. Lawyer, ah. like, you are there for me, just, fake just, Malian. Okay. okay. Anyway, over to you. Um, on this one, mm. I do not agree with him. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I do not agree with him. How are you a Malian? Like, everything he says, you don't agree with him. No, because me. like the lawyer said, mm. he probably has like different personality okay. from what we see out there. Mm. I feel like sometimes if he puts out this thing just for people to talk, people to talk mm. about. But on this one, let's assume that he's even being real about mm -hmm. it. Because to be honest, some people see Think it that, that way. way yeah. And everybody's entitled to their opinion. When mm -hmm. it comes to marriage, I feel like everybody should be able to define what marriage is. If you're going, going to marry somebody, you people should have planned your future together. If you want to have kids, I mean, some people don't even want to have kids at all. Mm. They just want to spend the rest of their life together. Some people don't want to have kids. They just want to adopt. Some people don't want to. I mean, people have different plans for themselves. Mm -hmm. If he thinks, if that's how he sees marriage, that's OK. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Let him do it his own way. Then if you see marriage the other way, and that's okay. So anyhow you see it, I feel like marriage is so personal that nobody, I mean, I, sometimes I wonder who makes all these rules and mm. regulations because it's a personal thing. It's about your life. It's about you deciding to spend the rest of your life with somebody. So I feel like people should be left to make their own decision. Maybe this is his own take on marriage, and that's fine. I wish there were certain um, words I could use on television without being banned by the NBC. But if I was able to, I think I'll call this BS. Mm, mm, okay. <laughs> no, 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 be <laughs> Because I heard I if I was able to, right? I think I'll call this BS. Mm. Um, so um, I'm going to flip the coin now, right? Um, so are you saying that if I have a child mm, with a woman, well, there's no wedding? Are you saying we're married? Because that's what it sounds like. If you're saying that if I, if I have the biggest wedding and I don't have a child, then I'm still it's single, similar. right? So if I have a child, Right? And I'm not married. Does that mean I'm married? No, no, I don't think that's like the opposite of what he's saying. No, I'm just trying to flip the coin and let's, because it doesn't make any sense. That's how dumb it is. That's what I'm no, trying no, no, to explain. No, no, I no, I don't think this is dumb. You don't think it's dumb? Nope. OK. I You're don't think Malian. it's dumb. No, it's not I about being like... a true Malian. It's just the way people see marriage, the same way you see relationships. No, no, let me explain it's, it's, something it's totally to you. Do you different. know what? When you're talking about kids, yeah, it is not all about people that come to church and they tell you that, oh, we've been married for 22 years, expecting the fruit of the womb, and now we're expecting the child. Sometimes it's not your doing. Do you understand? Sometimes things just happen. Life happens. You see people that give birth after 22 years of marriage. Yeah, so what about and coming from that angle, that was where I was going to come from. This statement is very insensitive to people. Very insensitive. Going that is what I'm that. saying. It is completely However, dumb. However, there are people I don't think it who have dumb. that You know why? Mindset. Because I feel like that's how some people see marriage. Yeah. I mean, a lot, of, uh, yeah, a lot, uh, if you talk to some people, they will tell you that. Um, this is some Nollywood narrative right nope, now. Nope. Real life things. Nah. I'm that's what I'm telling you. Yeah, if, because if see, Nollywood has a when big it comes role to see, play. Let me tell you, when it comes to marriage, you have to be very open-minded. Not like you're open-minded that you want to act that way, mm -hmm. but you need to understand that some people, this is how they feel about it. Mm. See, let, a lot of people will get married. Some women will get married, and they are really, they, they want a child, but they don't have it. But you see that they are keen on getting that child. Why? Because they feel that that is what actually makes their marriage marriage. Mm. Then say that, that, say that then um, your marriage hasn't been consummated instead of I saying... consummated because... <laughs> what are you <laughs> saying? <laughs> say now, if I now, what, oh, oh, I, feel, what oh. I feel you should have said mm. in that case is that he didn't put his words 
right. Okay, for but you can't say that it's totally dumb. I'm telling you, it that's is completely, that's how we okay. it is complete BS. For, that's what it is. If I say it is dumb, I understand where he's coming from. I understand where Naramali is coming from. Mm. Naramali is coming from where you are talking about now that there are people who see it this way. But seeing it this way, is it right? That is the question. So if it is not right, then it takes a lot of um, speaking, a lot of orientation for people to understand that even from the onset, marriage was meant for companionship. Mm. I mean, what did God say before he created Adam? I see that you need someone and blah, mm. blah, blah. And he made um, Eve, I'm sorry. Yeah, Eve. So it's first for companionship before reproduction, right? Then you multiply. And, and you multiply. Mm. It's first for companionship as far as I'm concerned. But there are so many people who believe that you're coming together to get married to reproduce and you must have children. But I mean, single, okay, wait, 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 single let me Let me bring, um, let me talk about the story. I was going home yesterday and I was having a conversation with my um, taxified driver and he was telling me that the reason why he's married is because of children he said something like um, women you people are not easy to handle the only reason why we have to be with you is because of kids mm. yeah there are a lot but, of marriages that are still good. existing because of their kids yeah, mm. that's what I'm saying like some people do you get feel that that's the way the way Naramali um, is putting it out there that's actually how some people feel yeah. about yeah. it mm -hmm. do you get that's Dumb what I'm people. saying they are not dumb people. That's okay. just what they want um, out of marriage. We, we, Doesn't we make get them anything dumb. out of this whole dumb yeah. and not dumb thing. But like I, I mean, say, I understand where both sides it, are coming. You can from. say it's insensitive to those that need. That is it. completely okay. insensitive. I like that word. But you it's use not first. dumb. If it, okay. extremely dumb. It's not. Are you dumb? Dumb. Nope. Not dumb. When we come back, we have a studio <laughs> guest. We'll be right back. <laughs> It's the hottest entertainment stories coming up right here, right now. This is Tea Time. Thank you for the tea. Between yourself and Neymar, who is the best rapper? I'm the best rapper. It might be maybe second after Magneto. Oh, oh, nice! nice. nice. That is going to fry my brains if you saw this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your account number, make a transfer. You get the money? Yeah. <laughs> for me. I started getting scared when the robot boy started saying, you know, we worry people. One thing is certain. If you are good, my dear, mm -hmm. you are good. My kind of person, and I'm not ready to cry look. over any man. You look like Jerul, no? Uh, a lot of people say that. Yeah, just the looks, that's all. Mm -hmm. Not the account. Just just wow. <laughs> Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. And our guest on this episode is an internationally recognized model. He's a fashion designer and an actor and also a reality TV show star. He was in the Big Brother Africa house representing Nigeria during the ninth season of the show. Let's make welcome the tall, dark, handsome Akintayo John Faniro, simply known as Tayo. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. Good welcome, to have you welcome. here. Th thanks for having me. You know? mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Boy, it's when I got in, you never told me uh, how handsome you think I am, you know. I mean, <laughs> maybe I'm seeing the handsome so part it from okay, the okay, okay, professional okay, on this eye. Table, so can we just skip but this it, talk? It's not a script, yeah. right? If I sometimes I feel, I feel like yeah. you're, you have gay tendencies. No, because like I'm why, saying, why I can't be on this table and then you guys are, and you're asking this. That's actually this. jealousy. Really? Why would jealous. yeah, he be jealous yeah, of okay. if anything is happening okay. here? Why would he be jealous? Okay. You know, they've, not that okay, you are not I'm handsome, saying. you know, but oh, they've oh. seen you so well, like all the time, you know. So I'm, I'm the guest. Oh, so you think it's not handsome? Mm -hmm. well, you guys will sort that later. <laughs> yeah, exactly what I'm saying. That can you guys sort Thank your you. issue later as well? <laughs> Fair, please calm down, calm down. <laughs> so you look good. Who are Thank you wearing? You. I'm, I'm wearing my own uh, collection, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so I'm launching in a few days' time, or let me say a few weeks, mm. but before the end of this month, by the grace of God. So, I don't know if I can stand up and show mm -hmm. it off. No, you but. can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yeah, so what is my called? design. What is it called? Tire of Anero. Is this going to be just yeah. for the men, or is there anything for uh, us? I will make some uh, unisex stuff. Okay. You know, I'm I'm not a I'm not good at sketching all these pretty dresses like mm. flowy gowns and stuff like that. But anything that is similar to what men wear, like maybe trouser suits, mm. uh, like mm. uh, a shirt dress, you mm -hmm. know, those kind of yeah, things. Yeah, but I'm going to kill it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just. Maybe because um, they just ended Big Brother Nigeria. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things going on. I just want to ask, like, how was life after Big Brother Africa for you? 
was it easy moving from just you to the celebrity status? Well, um, to God be the glory, it's, it's, uh, the, the story is, is great, you know. It's something that I'm grateful for. I'll do it a thousand times over and over again, you know. Uh, but it's not easy, you know. Um, when I went into the house, I went in to come out with the money, you know. I didn't, I never prepared for, well, you're very you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so I've, I was living in South Africa before the show. I didn't even plan of maybe after the show I would change where I was staying or something like that. Like, you know, so I just went into the house to win. And funny enough, my part of my plans were actually to come out and then uh, just venture into my clothing business, you know. Uh, but the story came out uh, differently to what I was expecting, you know, uh, on the finale, you know. So uh, that put me in a bit of psychological coma, you know. Uh, so I was, and then they, they actually presented me a psychologist, you know, to counsel me and all that, but I was really upset at that moment, and I felt Why I'm an African man, I could, yeah. I could deal with, no, don't worry, let's not go there. But I thought, <laughs> I thought like I could deal with my, uh, my pains by, mm -hmm. by myself, you know. African men would need counseling too sometimes, but that time I felt too tough, you know, but it actually affected me a lot because Many things, many good things happened after my uh, show. I got endorsement. I was on Tinsel, uh, Stargist, and doing this and doing that. Mm -hmm. But majorly, it was like I was just following. You know, my I wasn't. Do you understand That's what I'm saying? It took me about two years, you know, mm -hmm. to actually get over uh, that coma. You get what I to to come out of it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and then now another year to now start, you know, like you know try to understand myself again and all that. Because when you come out of the house, especially when it's Big Brother Africa, mm -hmm. where you have not spoken pidgin the whole of the three months, mm -hmm. you've not eaten Nigerian food the whole of the three months, uh, you are with people from different parts of Africa mm -hmm. who may have their own reasons for hating you even before knowing you or whatever. Like, so it's, mm -hmm. it's a different battlefield, you know, compared to Big Brother Nigeria. You know, so... Um, it, it did affect me, you know. It affected me and it took me a while to get over it. Even now, you know, I'm still, you know, uh, recently I deleted almost like all the posts on my yeah, Instagram. Yeah, actually going to ask you Okay, yeah. It's a sign of <laughs> So I just thought, okay, now I want to, you get, now I'm older, more mature, you know, more calmer. I've learned real life experience. Uh, real life lessons, okay, you know. Now that you're older, okay, so, so yeah. <laughs> you're older and calmer. I mean, I'm going to let your friend do the questioning. But before we came on, mm. before we introduced you, we're having a conversation on Udu. what Naira Mali said. Oh, okay. We're all having a conversation, okay, and right. he said something about um, if you're married and you don't have a child, then you're still single. So if even I think it's the biggest way. Yeah, even if have, basically that's what I mm. say. If you're married, so if I think it's dumb, she thinks it's not dumb. I think um, I understand where she's coming from. I understand where he's coming from. So what do you think about that statement? Oh, you think it's insensitive? Oh, do yeah, oh yeah, I think it's insensitive. Yeah. I mean, um, one thing that I admire the guy for is, is outspoken, you know. You get what I mean? I also have a bit of that in me. I, I like to say what I feel, and I think the world should be like that. Mm. But when it comes to social media and the masses, how they perceive mm. things, you are judged uh, based on what you have said. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing wrong with what Naramali said. Um, personally, if you would ask me or people would tell you, Tyra is married. Mm -hmm. But I haven't gone to the altar or to do any sort of uh, marriage. Mm -hmm. But I have two children. Mm -hmm. so, and I'm, I'm living a family woman. life. I keep the same woman. You know, yeah. I, I take my children to school in the morning. I, everything is, you get what I mean? I live a life. You feel me, you know? Mm -hmm. I know the kind of, uh, if you ask me why I haven't you done this, there's a type of marriage that I want, the way I want it and when I, or how I want to do it. Mm. And I'm not under pressure maybe by my partner or my in-laws or whatever. Mm. But our children are growing. If you see my first son is as tall as my waist uh, line now, you know, it's mm. five. So I may not be ready for marriage yet, but I'm already raising a king mm. or two kings. You get what I'm saying, you know? So when I, I can do marriage anytime, it's marriage. Mm. You get what I'm saying, you know? Um, and. This is our generation, it's even funny. Even in the industry, I know <clears throat> many of my maybe colleagues in the industry or even in general who started their own family or maybe they got married maybe like a year or two after I started, you know, building family. And today they are not together. Some lasted a year, some lasted two years or whatever. People divorce 
within just a month now. So there's actually no much respect for marriage anymore, mm. you know. So sure. it's the decision to stay with someone, you know, mm. to... You get what I mean? And, you know, you build something. Yeah, so that's it. So I have no disrespect for marriage or whatever. But, um, you know, you, the, the respect is more in the heart, you know, than just by the paper or the ceremony. Mm. All right. So um, you brought up the pain after Big Brother Nigeria. So um, mm. speaking of pain and emotional trauma, the whole world saw you cry. And before you would see you a me? Grown, <laughs> and before you would see a grown man cry, it has yeah. to be really, really, really painful, right? Yeah. So tell us about take us on that journey of what happened in South Africa and um this xenophobic attacks and all Oh that one. Yes. Oh okay. Yeah, so we all saw you cry. Yeah, you <laughs> cried. I didn't cry. I you was cried. crying. Man. You cried, my, bro. my test the videos my whole body is painting me. They beat me up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, see, bro, I mean, just look at me. Six feet, four inches. I can take on an average, uh, like, three men. You get what I mean? If we were to fight physically. I also have uh, <laughs> I also uh, was once a pa uh, paramilitary, you know, person. I was in Nigeria, Nigerian Navy. So physical strength is river, <laughs> you know. Uh, but in that kind of, uh, uh, you know, situation where... Uniform men were attacking me. I couldn't fight back, you know, mm -hmm. because fighting a uniform man would mean you're fighting the old country, the, yeah. the, the you know the authority. So I surrendered myself to the beating, you know. But if you were to put me in a ring with all those cops, I'll send some to coma, you know. I mean, <laughs> if you wanted to, to test me that way, you know. So, but um, what happened on that day was just a young, educated, and exposed African boy who knows his is right. right. And he knows he hasn't broken any law or, or rules, and he was just standing up for himself. And unfortunately, we have some good cops these days who want to do their job, and we have the ones who actually just want to wear the uniform and just, you know, just, mm -hmm. they're not different from thugs. You get what I mean, you know? And um, so I stood up for myself. They didn't like it, you know, and uh, they brutalized me, like you said, but it's an experience that. When I think of it, I think about the positive part. I was preaching Say No to Xenophobia. I've been on it for years. Mm -hmm. The first song I did, uh, that I shot a video for in 2015 was Say No to Xenophobia, mm -hmm. you know? And just this year, I had to get beaten before the whole world could hear that, okay, this guy actually is talking about something. Mm -hmm. And today, xenophobia, because of that incident, because when that happened also, some people were like, uh, maybe it was being too much. Why couldn't he just give, him, give them his phone? Even some Nigerians, even in South Africa, mm. people that I was trying to fight for said, uh, why don't you just give them 200 grand or something like that? You know, that's their own opinion. But I don't want to live in bondage. You know, I want to be free, you know? Um, so today, xenophobia has become a household topic that everybody knows about. Because it wasn't just long after then that the actual thing now happened. And people were like, oh, this is what I... And most of the things that I said before happened, mm. you know? So I believe that was a journey that I had to go through. That was one of my own fulfillment, uh, fulfillments in life, uh, what God sent me to do. So I'm grateful God chose me, you know, but the video of that beating, I've not been able to watch it since that time, and I don't think I want to go. So did Abby Kett that very reach out to you? I just crying again. Did Abby Kett that very reach out to you? Oh, yeah, she did. Um, such an amazing woman, you know. Um, she reached out to me, the Nigerian Consular General in South Africa, too. You know, they reached out to me. I actually felt uh, head swollen. Mm -hmm. I know many, um, uh, many youths of Nigeria, you know, feel that maybe because Tyre is a celebrity, you know, mm. uh, maybe because, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I just stood my ground and the news went all around, you know, it became viral, you know, and then they had to stand up for one of theirs. Mm. So if you're a Nigerian and you're going through something and they don't know about it and you expect them to come and fight for you, how? Okay, our so, time is um, far spent, but before okay. we go, what are you working on and what should people expect from you? All right, so um, I'm back to Nigeria now. Let's, okay. let's start full hammering time. that. Time. <laughs> well, full time, you know. Um, Come on, that, that doesn't was mean... that more true. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it made you no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't put it that way. Don't put it that way. After the uh, attack, mm -hmm. I actually made a trip to America. I did mm -hmm. like four cities in search of a new home because uh, I was kind of traumatized and all that. Mm. But at the same time, I just thought, okay, maybe this place is not safe anymore. You safe know what I mean? Home. And I wanted to find a new home. Mm -hmm. 
And it was actually uh, during my trip to America that I found every reason to know that there is no better place for me to be on earth than to be in my country, you know. So I came back home. I'm in Nigeria, not because they beat me in South Africa or because I can still go there. Yeah, it's not like my, our police force is any better Africa. anyways. Huh? So it's not like our police force is any better. Uh, well, Nigeria. but I mean, anyway, let's leave them <laughs> out of this. You know, so I'm back home now in Nigeria. Uh, right now, I'm doing my fashion uh, uh, business, you know, very well. You see everything I'm wearing, I made them. And this is actually good. not, mm -hmm. yeah, it, thank you very much, but it's not my best, you know. And mm. I did, and I Say can still <laughs> I can still assure you that many more will come because this is my comfort zone. You can wake me I'll up in the middle of the night go. and I will. I've I've walked the ramp for the biggest designers on the continent. And even before I became a model, even my high school days, I never used to buy ready-made clothes. You know, during uh, social activities, I used to sketch from that time making my own things. Mm. So I'm doing this now also as an actor. Uh, to God be the glory, I will be on. Uh, Jennifer's Diary, mm. and then uh, my siblings and I. I just uh, concluded a movie that I was shooting with Inkblot. Uh, it's called uh, Who is the Boss? Okay. Uh, we've shot that one already. It's a cinema movie. It will come out soon. And I still have some other producers that we're still talking and, you know, some maybe projects will be like maybe towards the end of the year or next year or whatever. But I'm here now, and I'm ready for all the tasks mm. and challenges. So how affordable are your outfits? <laughs> like, if I want to cop this right now, how much? to buy from me. Yes. So definitely it depends on the, the fabrics, mm -hmm. you know, it depends on I'm the style. like you what you're wearing right now, if I want we'll this. We'll talk about that. No, you sell know. your market. <laughs> Let people know how affordable. Like I can't wait to have my you know, anyway. Be because I, I, don't, I don't want to scare some people off to mm. think they can't afford ah, me. Okay. And at the same time, do you understand what I'm saying? So depending on the occasion, the style okay. and yeah, everything, we yeah, we'll work, down, work and according that's to that. how we wrap up this episode yeah. of Sea Time. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> I remember you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. My thank you as always go to my co-anchors, Ewa Oritu, Ifeolu Oshuke, and of course, our guest, Style. Thank you for being here. My Thanks name is Elsie Godwin saying thank you for watching and see you later.